Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. And a few minutes in Isaiah chapter 53. Amen. It's great to be here tonight and and to see so many people here. Amen. God's doing something on a Wednesday night. Amen. And you know what? We try to get across as as we can on a Wednesday night. Sometimes work doesn't allow that, but, you know, it's great to be here tonight. Um, A couple of weeks ago, I was driving over to Manchester one, I think it was on a Saturday, and uh, I was listening to the radio and the program that was on was, uh, it was on Radio 5 Live, if you, anyone listens to that. And it was, a, it, it was a sports type of interview. And uh, the interview was with a um, uh, former British sprinter, or I don't know whether 400 metres is sprinting, but he used to run 400 metres. Amen. Uh, and, and that was a guy called Chris Akabusi. Amen. Some of you might have heard of him. He's, uh, um, uh, he, he was, uh, uh, back in the 1980s, he was a, a top athlete, a uh, great runner, uh, and he's well known on the media. He's uh, a, a pundit quite often on, on athletics programs, and he comes on all other sorts of programs as well. Um, he's a sort of larger-than-life character with a big laugh, and, uh, you know, a, a, a happy-go-lucky type of uh, guy you couldn't uh, wish to see. Uh, um, and, you know, he's very likable. Amen. Uh, I believe at one time he might have been a Christian and, you know, I think he was one of these sort of celebrity Christians back in the 80s and the 90s. Amen. But this interview was, was more uh, um, focusing on his personal life and, and, you know, what he thought, what he lived for uh, and, and stuff like that. And it was really revealing um, it was, it was, it, 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 it was, it turned out that Akabusi was, um, abandoned when he was a child, him and his brother. His parents came from Nigeria, they'd come to university in, in, in England, and they'd had two children, and they'd left them in England when they went back to Nigeria, and I don't know, something had happened, uh, and, uh, Anyway, they, they ran out of money to care for them in the UK and, and they were just abandoned. And he tell, he's telling the story how uh, he was put on a train uh, uh, to London and uh, him and his brother and all he had was a, a chocolate bar and they didn't even know where they were going. They were kids, they were, you know, really young. His brother was, uh, I think his brother was four, four or five and he was two years old. And they didn't know anything. And they ended up in the station at at Waterloo or wherever it was in London. And uh, they they were just wandering around. Someone picked them up. uh, Fortunately, it was someone kind who took them to the police station. And the police, you know, uh, eventually they uh, they were put into a children's home in London. And, uh, you know, he tells a story, he was telling a story, he said he didn't have any, you know, there was no abuse that he, he was uh, 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 experienced in that children's home. But he, he did say, amen, from the age of two, amen, or from the age of four, he said he cried every night for his mum. I mean, he cried every night for his mum, it said, uh, 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 and, and till, till he was 12 years old, he said he cried every night for his mum to come and see him. And he said, when he was 12, he woke up to the fact that she wasn't coming, and that he was on his own. And you know what, at this, time, at this stage of the conversation, the interview was crying and, and it was really, you know, I was crying listening to it. I listened back to it again the other night and it was, you know, it's really sad. Amen. My mum's not coming back. My parents are not coming for me. I'm on my own. And, 
you know, uh, eventually he joined the army and uh, he found out he was a good athlete. And although he had great success as an athlete, if you want to uh, check out one of his great races, was the 1991 World Championships in Tokyo when he was part of a 400 meter relay team that whooped the Americans. Sorry, Pastor Tom. <laughs> amen. Uh, you watch that, amen. But you know, he was famous and he, he's a wealthy man. He, he's in business and all sorts of stuff. He's 60 years old now. But you know what? He'd been stalked by rejection all his life. Amen. He'd been stalked by this and it's affected his relationships, all his relationships, especially it, it, it had a couple of marriages that had failed and, and stuff. And, you know... Uh, it, when I listened to the interview, uh, he was a 60-year-old man, and, and, you know, I just felt sorry for him. I just felt, you know, that this man, you know, the, the, the fruits of his earlier life is, is just coming back to haunt him even still now. He said he had a problem with disassociation or dissociation or emotional detachment and, uh, uh, and a result of the rejection. He, he feared rejection himself and he couldn't get close to people. He couldn't get close to his wives. He said, you know, he, 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 even though he was married and, and, uh, and, and, you know, he had relationships with him, he had children, he said he just didn't feel like he could get so close to them. He found it difficult and impossible almost to get close to people and to, you know, really have a strong relationship. And the thing is that Akabusi's story is a story that, you know, is affecting countless lives today. Amen. You know, though people's stories or individual stories might be different and, and varied, amen, the common factor is rejection. And you know what, it's a funny thing because I had never thought of rejection before. Before I heard that interview, amen, a couple of days later I heard another interview by another sportsman, and this is a rugby player. And it was one of those ones where, you know, they find his lost family. And it was rejection that he'd suffered all his life. You know, even though he was a successful sportsman. And I'd never thought about it. It was a subject that, you know, it had gone over my head. But I realize it, it is a problem. It's a great problem in people's lives because it can come around from just about any direction, from any area of, of yours and my life, we can feel uh, or feel rejection. Even just a, a simple no to something that we ask can cause us to feel rejected. Amen. And I think rejection, you know, thinking about it and looking at it after that, after hearing that, is behind much of the malaise in society today. Amen. With, with, with family breakdown and, uh, you know, the assault on marriage that's coming, you know, they, they want to make it easy just to get a divorce like that, you know, just turn up and you can wind up your marriage, you know, they, they, don't, they don't put any importance anymore on relationships, close relationships, amen, and people are suffering rejection, amen, uh, there's so many people involved in transient relationships, you know, especially, you know, the romantic and sexual types. You, you've got all these uh, 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 strange and weird uh, apps you can go to, uh, Tinder and all that sort of stuff. That, uh, uh, you know, thank God they weren't around 40 years ago. Scary. They are very scary. But people are getting involved in, in meeting people they, they've not got a clue about. And then getting hurt. Amen, and, and feeling rejection. See, the insecurity that rejection brings is messing up a lot of lives. Amen, and, and you know what? I just uh, sort of reflected on my own life, and I thought, yeah, you know, I've suffered rejection. And I didn't even know it. <laughs> I didn't realize that, you know, probably some of the problems that I had in my life were because of rejection. Amen. So, uh, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, 
uh, a lot of the mental health problems that we're, we're seeing today uh, and, you know, the problems uh, 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 in, this, in this day and age are a result of rejection. Amen. And I believe that there's a lot of people, even probably everybody, has suffered rejection at some stage in their life. So what's rejection and what are some of the results of it if they're not dealt with? Amen. If you don't want something anymore, amen, you know, the most likely thing is you'll get rid of it. You know, if you've got a, an old washing machine or, or a computer or something that you don't want, an old telly, then you take it down a tip and you'll dump it. And you'll get rid of it. And then if you've got some old clothes, uh, you might ch- take them down a charity shop and, and get rid of them. And that's fine. But when it's another human being, amen, mum, dad, wife, children, amen, that don't want you anymore or don't want each other anymore, two parents in front of the kids and the kids see they don't want each other anymore. That's devastating. Amen. And I was reading about some, you know, studies that they've done, you know, to, uh, looking into rejection and, and stuff like that. And studies showed that the pain of rejection is the closest to physical pain of any emotion that you can have. And, you know, whereas in f- physical pain, uh, you know, it often disappears and you forget about it. Amen. Emotional pain, the, the, the pain of rejection is ha- far harder to dismiss and get rid of uh, 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 and forget. I remember when I was a kid, my, all my dad's family were well educated. They went to a, a, a top grammar school in Manchester. Uh, my older brother had been to this top grammar school. Uh, and so I was the next in line. So uh, you know what? They had to put me in for the entrance exam for the grammar school. Well, grammar school just wasn't going to be my scene. <laughs> Amen. I was, I was, you know, Latin and stuff like that, what they did at the, the grammar school. That, you know, forget it. Amen. I wanted to play football and cricket and stuff. I didn't want to do maths and science and English and all that. And I was hopeless. Amen. But, you know, my parents thought that if they didn't give me the chance, you know, that wouldn't be fair to me. But I thought it was unfair to be given the chance. You know what? And I went along and I did the entrance exam. It was on a Saturday morning. And I just, I, I, I just couldn't do any of the questions. It was, it was way over my head. And you know what? I remember walking out of that uh, uh, you know, exam room and, and walking home, the, the mile or so home, and I just felt dejected. I felt that, you know... Uh, 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 and then uh, you, the letter came, and you know, uh, and I'm not sure whether he gave the percentage, but uh, anyway, it says, uh, you know, you, you failed to, you know, pass the entrance exam. So I went off to my secondary modern school and, and, and you know, uh, and forgot about it. But you know what? When I think back about it, it hurts. I mean, I felt rejected, I felt bad. And, you know, that's just something real little. Amen. But, you know, things like that can, can really uh, affect us and, and, you know, have impact on our life. That could have had great impact just to, you know, on the future of my education. And, you know, it didn't work out too good, really, you know, in the end. Amen. It's painful. Painful. My guess is the rejection is... It's an almost universal problem that everybody's suffering to a, a greater or lesser degree. You know, that feeling that basically you're not wanted. Some people are like that. Some kids say, you know, parents say, oh, you know, you were an accident. You're kidding me, aren't you? Amen, we know that nobody's an accident, don't we? Amen. But to tell a kid that they were an accident, you know, 
That word rejection, going talking of Latin, it comes from a Latin word that means to throw back. You know, like a, a fish that's not big enough or something, or um, when you just throw it back when you've caught it. Or it means to, to discard. It actually means something else, but I'll use that reference a little later on. See, simply applying for a job, for example, can quite easily result in a rejection letter, can't it? You've heard of these people, you know, they're, they're, they're out of work and, and they've wrote 100 letters and they've not got a job. All they're getting back is rejection letters. Sorry, your application was unsuccessful this time. Amen, it, it hurts. Can you, can you imagine how it hurts to get abandoned by your parents? Maybe, maybe that's happened to you. Amen. There are so many scenarios where rejection can take place. And like Akabusi, it can have a lasting and pervasive effect on your life. The feeling that you've failed, you know, where you haven't, amen. But that feeling that you've failed, uh, do you, you've not matched up to uh, someone's standards, uh, uh, you know, you've not met expectations uh, 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 you, and the awfulness of that. Can lead to so it can lead to lots of dangerous things taking place, harmful problems in people's lives. You, you, you know, drug abuse and, and alcohol abuse, and, and you know that sort of thing. Uh, you know, uh, sexual abuse. It can lead to a lack of self worth or self esteem, and you know it can lead to anger. People who feel rejected get angry. Does anyone ever get angry? Amen. Bitterness can lead to violence, cruelty, revenge. Who's ever thought of revenge when they've been rejected? Has anyone ever been dumped by a girl or a boy? Amen. Unfortunately, <laughs> that has happened to me. Amen. And you want to get revenge. Sarah, so we found a letter the other day. My brother gave me a stack of letters that I wrote when I was in the army. And uh, one of the letters we read was, uh, uh, I, I, I was writing to my parents, and I told them that this girl had dumped me. And, uh, and I, you know, I, 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 in, the, in the other part of the letter, it said I, I'd gone to the doctors to get some sleeping tablets. I think, yeah, it must have affected me. That rejection must have affected me. She actually went off with a guy who played for uh, a football team in, in, I won't tell you where it was, but he eventually got transferred to United. That was even worse. <laughs> but he wasn't very successful at Old Trafford, so that, that sort of, that was my revenge. <laughs> but it's not nice. It's not a nice feeling when, when you get rejected, especially in love or, you know, whatever. It's, a, it's an awful feeling. And it can cause people to do crazy things. See, rejection can lead to, it can lead to murder and suicide. I think we fear rejection above all else in our lives. Of course, rejection can be self-inflicted, can't it? I know. You know, you can just act like an obnoxious, self-centered, uh, you know, uh, uh, offensive, uncaring person, and, and then you wonder why no one wants to know you and, and people, you know, uh, uh, run off from you. Amen. Have I been there, anyone? But as Christians as well, amen, we're not immune from rejection. Amen. In fact, when we look at God's word, it tells us if they rejected Jesus, don't think that you're going to have it any easier. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 53 verse 3, a very, very well-known scripture, that the Messiah will be despised and rejected by men. Amen. If you're struggling with rejection, past or present, amen, for any reason, good or bad, 
Amen. Jesus, amen, knows how you're feeling. Amen. Especially if you're getting a not wanted message because of your faith. Amen. Remember, you know, there's hundreds of examples in the Bible that I've come to see uh, of people being rejected. Jesus said, lots of, uh, lots of uh, obvious uh, examples of Jesus being rejected. You remember when he, he went to, back to the synagogue in Nazareth and, and he got up behind the pulpit and he, he started preaching from the word, uh, amen. And, uh, you know, uh, it said that the, they rejected, who's this guy, amen, Je, the son of Joseph, his, his brothers and sisters are here, amen. Who does he think he is coming and preaching the Bible to us? And they ran him out of town. He was rejected by his very own. Amen. Obviously, ultimately, he was rejected, wasn't he, on the cross. Your faith's going to uh, cause you to be rejected. And where does it work within the family? It's going to happen. Let's go back a little. See, whether it's your own fault or the fault of others that you've had that experience of rejection, the only way to successfully deal with it is by going to God. Amen. Maybe the reason that I didn't think about rejection so much was because I gave it to God when I got saved. It wasn't something that I particularly looked at in my life because, uh, you know, when I got saved, I said, right, that's the past. Everything's, uh, you know, and, and the future's before me. The first scripture that I ever read, you know, when I, when I got saved was 1 Peter 5 verse 7, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. Amen, and you can run through the word of God, amen, and you'll find that God does care for you, amen. He's not going to reject you. The Bible says he's never going to leave you or forsake you. Amen. amen. God's on our side. And he cares for us. See, we mustn't let bitterness and anger, even as Christians, uh, that rejection bring. When the pastor says no, whew, he's rejected me. But we, we mustn't let any, any sort of rejection cause us to do bad stuff. Amen. Romans 12, 21, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. And rejection can be evil. We must seek forgiveness and to forgive others when we are rejected. The Lord's Prayer encourages us to uh, forgive those who trespass against us. Those who reject us, forgive them. They might not, you know, just, just do it. Forgive them. If you think you've been rejected, amen, then look at the likes of Joseph in God's Word. I mean, read about him, amen, uh, uh, you know, in the, la in the latter chapters of the book of Genesis. Amen. This guy was rejected. He was flung into a pit. And then he, his brothers, amen, his very own brothers, family, his flesh and blood, they sold him into slavery. And while he was in slavery, he was, uh, you know, some dodgy lady tried to set him up. Amen. And then, amen, she had him arrested and thrown into prison. Watch out for dodgy ladies, guys. Watch out for dodgy men, girls. See, that's rejection and abandonment for you. Amen. And there came a time when all of that was behind him. And it's interesting. He realized after the birth of his first son, amen, I think it was Manasseh, wasn't it? That made it, it said that God had made him to forget the dark past, the dark events and feelings of the past. See, if God can do that for you or for Joseph, he can also do it for you and I. Amen. Remember, you'll never experience rejection if you make Jesus your saviour. Amen. It says in John 6, 37, and he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. 
Isn't that cool? In Hebrews 13, verse 5, I said it already, I will never leave you or forsake you. See, as Christians, we've got to, deal to, to learn to deal with rejection as disciples of Jesus. In Luke chapter 6, amen, you can read this. In Luke chapter 6, verse 1, uh, Jesus sent out his disciples two by two, I believe, amen, on a missionary trip. Amen. On the first missionary trip, basically. Amen. He sent them out. Amen. And one of the tests that I think Jesus was giving these men was one to deal with rejection. Amen. To deal with rejection. Amen. Verse 5 uh, starts, And whosoever will not receive you, brush the dust off your feet and carry on to the next place. If people reject you and your Christian faith, then that's fine. Move on. If they refuse to receive the gospel message, move on. Amen. Don't get involved with them. Amen. Don't cast your pearls at swine, the Bible says, doesn't it? Amen. See, their rejection probably isn't personal anyway. It, it, they're rejecting God. Amen. Don't take it to heart. Just move on. The, 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 the scripture says, brush the dust off your feet. Brush the, the, the dust of rejection off your feet and move on. Keep moving. See, even as Christians, every relationship won't last. Amen. It won't last. The, the, those who once walked with us don't walk with us anymore. Amen. So many people that we've had relationships, lots of friends I, I've had since I was a Christian, amen, uh, 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 are not my friends anymore. They've gone, they've disappeared. Interesting that the word rejection, again, one of the meanings can commit excrement which is pretty awful <laughs> to feel like that that's what you feel like isn't it when you're rejected amen you can feel like that sometimes when people mistreat you you know and walk away you can feel like you've been treated like you know what Amen. But what do you do if you get extra money on your shoes? You wash it off. Amen. And you keep going. Amen. Okay, lastly, in Luke 9, verse 6, the Bible says, that they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. See, they didn't give up when they got rejected. Amen. Rejection can cause you to give up, can't it? It can, like, uh, stop you in your track. There's people, you know, uh, go listen to that interview with Chris Akabusi. You can find it on a podcast somewhere. But you feel that this guy has, you know, he's, there's, there's, there's a barrier in his life that he's not willing to get over or can't because of what's happened to him. See, but don't give up when you feel rejection. When you're not welcomed. We, we've been on the doors hundreds of times and had it slammed in our face. Loads of times when you're on a, you know, you go on outreach and you hand someone a leaf and they throw it on the floor and, you know, they snarl at you. Amen. That's rejection. And, you know, you can take it personally. You know, you're thinking inside, who do you think you are throwing my leaflets away? That's God's leaflet. <laughs> But you can feel like, you, you, you know, you can get that feeling of rejection real easy. See, rejection may have shut one door, amen, but God will open another door. You might walk down the street and knock on every door and get it slammed in your face and you get to that last door and someone will come out and they'll, they'll want to uh, invite you in and hear what you've got to say. Amen. God will open another door. He'll open a better door. Yes. Amen. I want to tell you that, you know, uh, uh, 
God shut a lot of doors for me, but he opened better ones. Much better ones. There's always another opportunity with God. Amen. There's always another possibility. Amen. It might seem impossible with man, but you know what? With God, all things are possible. Amen. You can deal with rejection. Rejection is only negative when we do nothing about it. Amen. When we let it rule our lives. When we let it take over. Amen. You know, we can't uh, minimize, minimize its threat, but if we're, you know, we can use it as a stepping stone to better things. Instead of being an insurmountable barrier, you know, we can uh, uh, see it as, an open, uh, as a, an, another opening of a door. See, it's an emotional monster, isn't it? Rejection. Can, any, can anyone, uh, 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 I don't even want to put your hand up, but you know, do, do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Yeah. Amen. It's not a good thing, but we can deal with it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's, let's just bow our heads for a moment or two as we close our service this evening. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, the easiest way is via our website at www dot newharvestuk.com you can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on facebook or twitter you can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 chapel street salford manchester m3 6by we'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services however you might be feeling and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you. We're praying for you. And once again, thank you for listening.